short word of prayer. Almighty Father, we give you thanks. We give you praises. We thank you for your word. That even as you would minister all of us right now, dear Father, that your word would go forth, dear Father, as a two-edged sword. We pray, dear Father, that it will heal where, it would, where healing needs to be. That it will cut, it will rebuke, it will motivate, it will encourage. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I ask you, I just Glennie, she kind of jumped the gun here for me because I was going to ask you to present arms this morning. I don't know about you. I remember walking to church with this in my hand many Sundays. This one real heavy, but certainly, I remember walking to church with this many Sundays, and there is a different, there's a feel when you walk with the word of God. You know, nowadays we have, excuse that fact, I had a little book for this here to tell you the truth. And if you look at it good, it's it dusty and things like that, there. Because now we use technology. We use our phones. But there is something different about using this. When we open this, we don't see no banners flashing up. They talk, telling me we got a message coming. We don't see a pop up telling us, do this. And you know, you're reading the, the, the Psalms, and next you know, you're going to a message and you're trying to talk. To, you're, going, you're going off track. You're engaged in a conversation that you normally would, you know, you, you lost track of what you were supposed to be doing. When we have this here, you know, sometimes. You're on, you're on your Bible and you're checking a, a scripture and an incoming call comes in. And straight away, you lose track of what you were doing. But I want to tell you that when you're using this, this physical word, the only incoming call is God's word. It's God calling you and instructing you and motivating you as to what to be done as to what he would want you to do for, for him. Now, the Bible is composed of two major sections. We have the Old Testament, consisting of how many books? The Old Testament. Oh, Lord. <laughs> how many books are there in the Old Testament? <laughs> yeah. I can't go and stop this thing. We can go and go back to Sunday school. You let me go and go back to Sunday school. Old Testament consisting of 39 books. Because we are sticking to this, our version that we read. And then we have the New Testament consisting of 27 books. Giving us a total of 66 books. All right? I remember one of the things we had to do as a Sunday school was to learn the books of the Bible. So we would start with Genesis. And then you would say, our next person would say, our next person, and then after that, and then, and then, and then who next? Uh, who? No, 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 no. I'm going to forget on the lady. Roof. All right, we ain't going to afford her because <laughs> we see how this year can go. This year gets so it is quick. So the Bible, when you walk with it, it completes the armor. It is part of the armor of God. Let us turn 
So Mark chapter 9, verse 17. Let me hear those pages um, rustling there. And Mark will be found in which? The New Testament. I remember a funeral being conducted here in Barbados online. And the pastor or the reverend, the Bible, he had to go and find the scripture. Well, let me tell you, you know the pastor, he couldn't find it. He would have been one of these modern day reverence or something. That the only way you could find the books the Bible is with a Google search. And this well, it was struggling to find the book to be read. That wouldn't be said of us in here. <laughs> well, he probably um, used to use any app. So let's turn to Mark chapter 9. And we're going to be reading from verse 17. And if you are familiar with this scripture, it is about a man who would have brought his son, whose son had an issue. Let's start with that. He's what we would know today as being possessed. He brought the son to the disciples, but the disciples were unable to deal with the issue. Now Jesus, getting frustrated, he rebuked them for their inability to be able to deal with the issue at hand. And you can, by reading, you can hear the, the you know, he sounded annoyed. And Jesus took over the matter and dealt with it. So in verse 21, we're picking up from there. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, he has often thrown him into fire, this is a demon, or wanted to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus responded, if you can, everything is possible for those who believe. Imagine this man asking God or telling God, if you can do anything, deal with this. And after Jesus would have said everything is possible for one who believes, it says immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my own belief. Now that seems a little, you know, contradictory there. I do believe, help me overcome my own belief. You see, all of us have some measure of belief, some measure of faith. But sometimes for us to really do things. Now, this man was coming on behalf of his son. In fact, the healing of his son was directly linked to this man's faith. I remember Brother Rohan speaking that sometimes our healing, our faith, is directly linked to those who are around us. First of all, we need to believe that Jesus can. That Jesus can. The Father has some faith, but it seems as though it was not enough faith, and the man and the Father recognized this and asked for help. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, do not be ashamed to ask for help. Sometimes we say right with our mouth, he can. We sing it, 
we speak about it. God can do all things. We quote all kind of fancy scriptures. But our actions, does it say he can or he will? Rather, our actions says he might be able to. I ain't so sure. Probably in the right environment, he may be able to do it. This is what our actions are saying, while our mouth is saying something else different. But when it comes to God, no matter the circumstances, he can and he will. In verse 29, when the disciples wanted to know why, why they couldn't do it, why they were unable to heal the boy, Jesus responded and, and said to them, This kind come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Those with an NIV version, anybody accept with the King James Version, please read Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. If you have another version, anybody with another version, accept the King James Version? Anybody? Okay. Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. Yeah. And he said, okay, uh -huh. I'm talking about Matthew chapter 17, yeah, 21, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, she does have a different version. Another version? Mm -hmm. Okay, prayer and fasting. Now, some of you will notice the reason why some of you can't find it that in some versions there isn't of 21. You recognize that? It goes from 20 straight to 22. Some versions, you don't have it. So we can do a little Bible study here. And the reason for that, <laughs> OK, <laughs> noted. It is said that. Matthew would have copied from Mark. So some versions, it said that word fasting was not found in the original manuscript and probably was later on added. So in some Bibles, the newer ones, the, who would have gone and retranslated, would have left out the word fasting. So some go by prayer, and some versions will say prayer and fasting. And you can do some more research on your own with that. Now, depending on what situation you're dealing with, but if you're cleansing people or exercising, as, as you will put it, but then it's important for you to know if it's prayer and fasting. But for this message, it's not that important. What I want to be focusing on this morning is understanding the kind. We need to understand the kind. There is a kind that we all experience. We have fruit. But within fruit, there are many different types or kinds of fruit. You have your apples, you have your mangoes, 
and we can list and go on grapefruit and we can go on each one tastes different it looks different it's harvested differently so the first thing you got to understand is that there are different kinds we are dealing with different kinds the disciples they dealt with a kind that they were not familiar with it was not a one-size-fits-all nor was it unisex this kind needed a specific prescription in order for, for things to happen in order for us to have our breakthrough two things need to happen first of all the kind must be identified and secondly the right prescription must be applied most of the time our breakthrough does not come about because of our perception and that we have incorrectly diagnosed the kind the kind is the situation you are going through or the challenge that you are faced with now if you have incorrectly diagnosed it then you are going to apply the incorrect prescription and you are not going to have the results that you ought to have the right prescription must be applied if you go to the doctor with some ailment let's say you have diabetes you wouldn't expect that the doctor will prescribe panadols for you well what will that do for you is not going to help control the insulin so it's important that once you identify the kind or the situation you are going through well then you can apply the correct remedy are you with me one of the things we need to understand is that sometimes when you're going through a situation or a challenge the kind is not flesh and blood the kind is not me or is it you for Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells us for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so sometimes we are faced with an issue and we lash out of at the person in front of us what we fail to understand is that there are things happening behind the scenes pulling and tugging the strings of the individual we are not wrestling with flesh and blood so what do we need in a case like this we need something that I used to learn in Sunday, in Sunday school back then called the spirit of discernment. When last you all hear that word, discernment. What discernment is, is the ability to perceive, understand, and judge things clearly especially those things that are not obvious or straightforward sometimes we can find ourselves in a situation that is so mixed up got us so wrapped up and have us so entangled that we lay blame we get vexed and we do things and we behave because we do not understand the situation that is presented before us has that ever happened to you you are unable to understand and perceive clearly what is going on now when you can do this have that spirit of discernment then when you see something happening or occurring and there is no reason why this thing should be happening you don't need to fuss up or fight up you just need to let it be and turn it over to God Romans 12 chapter 12 tells us therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living 
sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, after you have done all these things, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. That is where the discernment will come. After you have given yourself over to God, you are living the life that he has called you to live, you are showing mercy and you are pleasing him, then you are be able, you'll be able to prove what the will of God is. You know, at this stage, some of us have been going to church for many years and we still don't know what God's will is for our lives. You'll be sitting in the house of the Lord for donkey years, as you put it, hearing message after message, and still yet we are challenged about what God's will is for our life. The kinds that sometimes we will face are the type of situation. Once we are able to apply discernment to this situation, we will know how to prescribe the right fix for this or find the correct solution. There are some situations where we need prayer. Some situations that you'll find yourself need prayer. Agree? According to the word of God, there are some situations, like we would have read, just read, needs, we need to pray and fast. And then there are other situations where we need to pray, fast, and have a hands-on experience with that situation. How do we know which type, how do we know how to apply what we are going to apply to this situation. Are we going to pray alone? Are we going to pray and fast? Or are we going to have a hands-on, just a, a hands-on approach? Some of us as Christians, that's why I like the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah not only prayed, but he acted as well. Some of us want to have what we call remote control Christianity. You see somebody in need, and you know, we tell them, I can pray for you. And we go along about our business. Not stop to think, how can I get to know this person and meet that person? Maybe I can bring some sort of, you know, assistance to that person. How can I help? You know, we don't want to ask the person, well, how can I assist? Because when we ask that person, how can we assist? The person may respond and say, well, I need such and such. And you don't want to hear that. Because what's going to happen is going to move you out of your comfort zone. It means that you got to get up now and go and do something physically to help that person, to help that individual. Maybe you may need to walk an extra, go an extra mile with that person. So you're going to ask, you're going to tell them, well, I can pray for you. And you're going to love you, because it's the easiest thing for you to do. But sometimes, our walk calls for a hands-on experience. You've got to get in there and get your hands dirty. In order for that healing to come about. It reminds me Our scripture found in 2 Kings chapter 5. Remember Nehemiah the leper? He wanted cleansing. He wanted to be healed. Going to the man of God. And the thing is that the man of God ain't even come out and, and, and tell him nothing. The man of God sent a messenger to tell him what to do. And Naaman got angry. Naaman felt insulted. Naaman thought that Elisha would have just called on the name of God, where if he stand off the spot, and he'd be cured. That's what Naaman was looking for. You see, Naaman did not understand the kind he was dealing with. 
Naaman looked at all the nice streams and rivers that were close to him that he could have used. But you look with Naaman, look where and let you tell him to go in debt and wharf water. So Naaman got vexed and he gone off. And he decided that he ain't doing that. And the servant had to speak some sense into him. Sometimes we need people to speak some sense into us. Because we get all high and mighty, we get in our feelings. No, you can't be telling me that. And you don't want to hear, so therefore, we stop ourselves from receiving the blessing that we should believe, that we should receive. All he had to do, sometimes it's just a simple thing. Just go out and it. Sometimes he was given a, a number seven times he was supposed to dead. Sometimes we like Naaman are asked to dip as well. We dip once, we dip twice, we might even dip three times. When well, nothing ain't happening, well, it makes no sense of dipping the more down with that. Sometimes we may get as far as dip number six, and we call it quits. Not realizing that if we wanted to hold on or do it one more time, our healing would have come about. We have to do something sometimes in order to deal with the kind that is affecting you. We have to do something sometimes. There are some kinds that we may find ourselves faced with that there is nothing we can do. It is totally up to the will of God. Now, I must tell you, that is one of the most difficult things you can deal with. When there's nothing you could do, or anybody could do for you, or for the situation, it is totally up to God. Again, applying the spirit of discernment to this situation. Because sometimes this kind, you may need to ask yourself, is this kind my issue? Or is it an issue affecting me? Now there's a difference. Is this my issue? Or is it an issue affecting me? Everything that you go through ain't really got anything to do with you. It may be something that somebody doing that affecting you. So how are you going to approach this issue? Well, you can't go and tie up the body and drag them here or there and tell them this is what you're supposed to do. You, you can't do that. But it's affecting you. So how are we going to deal with this kind? I submit to you this morning that one way that in which you can deal with this type or this kind is to deal with you. Sometimes you don't need to deal with the other person or the situation. Deal with how you are handling the situation. Deal with how that situation is affecting you. That issue sometimes, if it's a relationship issue or a health issue or a church issue, a societal issue, there are many issues that we have. But how we deal with it is what's going to make the difference. So the kind that you may encounter might not change. But you may be the one that has to do the changing. Remember Paul? Found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And Corinthians is found in which book? 
in the New Testament. After which book? After what? Corinthians is from after which book? <laughs> Corinthians comes a Corinthians comes after which book? Okay. Right. Not Hebrews this time. <laughs> Paul will face with a thorn in his flesh. Did the situation go away? No. But it affected him. Let's turn to it quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 7. I remember prayer to technology when I had to prepare a message it would take me <laughs> more nearly a month I would have I didn't have no, um, no Google search back then I had what I call a concordance book you know it's a concordance Right, those people that are familiar with the Bible. And in the concordance, when you want to look up a particular verse or something, you would just check the concordance, and that would give you all the references um, found in the Word of God. So you would go, oh, I've got all these books around me and everything, as though I got UV or something, in order to prepare. Now we just got a laptop, and they just Google search, pull up my scripture quickly, copy and paste. A lot easier. But well, back then, this is how we used to do it. Verse 7, chapter 9. Chapter 12, sorry, from verse 7 to 9. Paul says, to keep me from being conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, let's read together. My grace. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. Sometimes the situation may not change. But you may have to change. You may have to adapt in order to embrace the situation because what may be happening here is that God's glory is about, all about God and about he receiving his glory. I don't know what kind you may be facing this morning or what type. But rest assured, God is able to to prescribe the right solution to this kind. Your kind may be a health issue. Your kind may be a relationship issue. Your kind may be your children, your parents, something that you are dealing with. We're going to ask God for the spirit of the sermon because it's important that we correctly perceive what is happening and understand and be able to apply what is happening. Can we do that this morning? Can we ask God to speak to us, to guide us, that we will be able to prove what his good and pleasing will is? I'm sure if we do, he will answer our prayers. We are all faced with some kind, some type of challenge. Maybe your kind is one that can be remedied with prayer alone. Perhaps you may need to supplement it with some fasting. Or maybe that kind may require you to get up and do something about it. 
only you can answer that question this morning. But we all have a kind. This morning is your opportunity to ask God to direct us in the way that he would have us to go. And that knowledge and understanding, all good knowledge and understanding that comes from him, we may be able to apply to the situation. So since I want to encourage you, don't lose heart. Don't give up. This kind can be dealt with. This kind God is in control of. So don't worry. Some kinds re just require us to stand still. Sometimes we get flustered and frustrated because we are putting, when we should be praying, we may just be doing. And you know how that goes? It leads to frustration, anxiety, and then a whole set of health challenges. Some kind just require us to stand still. I don't know what your kind requires this morning. But we will pray and ask God.